Welcome back. Welcome to Sukatai. Got another video today where we're going to be breaking in Zelda a little bit more, learning a little bit more about her road tripping abilities. But before that, I want to share with you the incredible Sukhothai Historical Park. We didn't come here in the 77 provinces journey. We went to another historical park within this province. This one is the major one. This one is probably the best one. There's one particular temple that I'm really, really excited to share with you. It's very famous. And then in the distance behind the historical park, is a very famous national park with a very famous mountain and we're going to climb the mountain <laughs> it's going to be an action-packed adventure today and we're going to be learning more about zelda so strap in let's go so let's have a quick gander at some of the beautiful sights of the Sukhothai historical park These enclosed statues of Buddha are what Sukhothai is famous for and it's one of the reasons why they're so well preserved because obviously from pretty much every angle except for the roof they're sheltered against the sun and uh, the rain and wind and so they really are in almost pristine even the paintwork I mean it's obviously not the original but you can still see I think it's paint it might not be it might just be erosion and, and mold but it looks beautiful nonetheless actually got in here yesterday for free it was raining and I was going for my afternoon walk and I came through the back entrance and the security guard was like yeah it's fine you're just walking through it's the end of the day it's in the rain so I actually got to see most of this place yesterday so I just want to share with you the two ones that I like the most and then I'll take you to the really special one and then we'll go up the mountain I could cycle around here all day and show you every single one of these, but you should come and discover it for yourself. And like I said, I came here yesterday on my walk and saw, saw them all for free in the rain and it was lovely. So let me take you to the last one. It's outside of this historical square and just on the outside. <laughs> it looks silly, but it's practical. You know, as I get older, I realize fashion importance goes down and practicality goes up. I really am turning into my dad. Mm. 
I'm quite dashing, aren't I? <laughs> um, it is another 100 baht to get in. So it was 100 baht to get into the historical park, which has maybe a dozen beautiful ruins. And then it's a 100 baht extra just to get into this one. So this is the special one. You can read actually the history and the study of the conservation here and learn about the dates in which they found it and re rejuvenated it to what it is now. And uh, you, oh yeah, you could see it was just covered in moss and it was broken down. And it looks like they've done a really good job. It looks incredible. Let's go take a closer look. My favorite thing about that temple, I think, is the fact that the hand was, the right hand was covered in gold. And that's because in the temple itself, just outside of these ruins, um, Thai people normally pay a little bit of money and they get some gold leaf and then they rub it on an ancient figurine of Buddha. And it seems like a lot of people rub the gold on the hand. I didn't see anyone doing it today, but I thought that was really cool to have that little golden touch. So that's just a little snapshot of the Sukhothai Historical Park and Wat Si Chum. In the distance, you can see with the drone shot here, you can see that mountain in the, in the clouds. That's where we're going to be climbing now. We're going to go up there. It's the National Park. And uh, I scouted it out the other day on the way into Sukhothai. And apparently it's a four hour trek. And it's 11 o'clock already, so <laughs> we're going to have to get our skates on. Slight change of plan. We're now here at Ram Keng Heng National Park. And look, I was gonna climb up to the top and then climb back down, but she's told me it's gonna be about a three or a four hour climb up. And then obviously you wanna stay up there for a few hours, watch sunset. So coming down in the dark is a no go, but there is camping here. So I've just parked up outside this ranger station. I've paid 240 bar entrance. That includes the bike and then inside at the other ranger station i'll be able to reserve a tent if you want to come and do this you have to get here before two o'clock they won't let you climb up the mountain after two o'clock because obviously it's dangerous and uh, you just pay this lovely lady here so let's go okay that was quite straightforward although there was a few issues they'd run out of sleeping bags and a few of the other items that you can rent at the top because there's 160 people on the mountain today. I did want to come yesterday, but it was raining all day. Now it's Saturday, it's a lot more busy. Looks like you can also camp here at the base, trek up, get the views and come back down and sleep here. But um, I've rented the tent and I think I've rented a mat. So I might be a little bit uncomfortable tonight, but I don't care. One night slumming it on the mountain is good for me. Adventure. And you can get rice and omelettes and instant noodles and water and drinks at the top. But there is also a shop here. So I've stocked up on some ice cold M&Ms and a Gatorade and a couple of bottles of water. Now apparently it's four hours. So for my mental and physical health, I'm not gonna be documenting too much of the trail, but I'll show you bits and pieces.
so it's been about 10 minutes not even <laughs> absolutely drenched already sweat it's so humid in this uh, lower level this jungle and <laughs> talk about demoralizing after only 10 minutes they have a little sign here and you can see that you have literally not even started it's so far up so I really hope they don't keep showing you that on the way up because and we've got to go up it's like this cameras never do it justice but it's like this and this is the only and this is just the start <laughs> This is why it takes me five hours to get up a, a trail that's supposed to be three or four. Because I'm like, ooh, a butterfly, let us get a shot. Oh, he keeps moving. Let me follow him for 10 minutes. I just stopped to uh, put my big camera away. <laughs> Have some of those amazing M&Ms, oh my God. And uh, here comes a porter. Hello, is that Buddycap? Buddycap. Buddycap, Buddycap. You know what, I always wonder, right? I just stopped for a couple of minutes. And I got attacked by mosquitoes, right? And I, oh, there's one right next to my ear. What I always think is like, if I wasn't here, what would the mosquitoes be doing? You know what I mean? Like when I'm in the jungle, I'm like, I wasn't here five minutes ago. And I'm not gonna be here again in my life. Yeah, okay, a few people walk up this trail every day. But if you think about the entire jungle on the earth, what do they, what do, they do? Who do they bother? Because they can't get near the butterflies. There's only plants. Like what, what do they do? Question of the day. What the hell do mosquitoes do when I'm not around? <laughs> Very rare flat part. Mm, three meters. Wow. Go, go, go. Facebook AE Studio. AE Studio. AE Studio. Cool. Light and I uh YouTube. Oh. Uh Paddy Doyle. YouTuber? Chai. Uh Chong. Paddy. Paddy. Doily. Doily. And I will come from England. 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 My name is A. Hey, nice to meet you. Uh I need your name. Paddy. Paddy. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, God. Okay, we... One, two, three. Oh. Up. Up. Okay, like this. Come on, son. Okay. How are the tune? <laughs> Cover my cap. Swai Mac. <laughs> yeah, this tree. I'm not sure of the species. It looks like a banyan tree, but it's a little bit different, so I'm probably way off. But uh, banyan means meeting place because these trees are so recognizable and they span a circumference enough to shelter people from the sun and the rain. And people usually put tables and chairs underneath the big banyan trees. Now, I'm not saying this is a banyan, it's probably not a banyan, but it's similar looking. The way that the branches come out and then the roots actually make their way down. And once they hit the ground, they spy, spider web out here like this. And they, this particular one is grabbed onto this beautiful rock system here and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And then the ties have wrapped it with some blessings and there's some Thai prayer. Gorgeous, absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Nearly there now. That's the campsite. Fuck you, Hill. <laughs> ah. Made it to the campsite. Look at me. Yeah, in the posture. Yeah. I'm an adventurer. Yeah. Face, face your face to the sun. Okay. Professional. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice. Keep going, keep going. Good. Good. Thank you. <laughs>
Right, that was an incredible climb. Amazing views at, at the sunset last night and then in the morning, um, just lazy in the tent. I had a look outside, sunrise was lovely, but I didn't go up to the top. Decided to leave Sukhothai now and I've packed up Zelda. And this is the thing that I want to say that's a really, there's an unexpected pro about this particular setup. And that is, you can see my back box. That's where I keep my camera equipment and smelly trainers and things. And then my backpack, that's my clothes. And I've got way too many clothes. I didn't even think about packing for this trip properly. I just wanted to get the hell out of Bangkok. And so having that there, that is like an unexpected backrest. Like when I'm driving, I can quite nicely rest my back. There's nothing pulling on me. Like, cause I used to just have that bag on me. And when I'm going up hills, it's pulling on my back. And that's one of the reasons why I was always complaining about my back. Now I have a, like an actual seat and a backrest and it's soft and it keeps my back upright and it keeps my posture good and I can lean back on it and it's just such an unexpected positive and something that I'm not super stoked about is the you see the silver I think it's called an engine guard it looks cool and it's part of the bike as stock but what I've decided to do is order a custom one from K-Speed they have a black one and it goes out a little bit further. It almost acts as if it's a crash, a crash cage as well as an engine guard. Uh, two reasons, it's black and I think it will look nicer than the silver one. And the second reason that I got it is my clamp that if you saw in the previous episode, I melted onto the engine <laughs> and to the exhaust. And I'm thinking that because it goes out a little bit further and there's a bit more, uh, there's a few more places that I can clamp my GoPro on, I think I'll be able to get a lot more dynamic angles from when we're driving. So I've ordered that online and it's shipping to Chiang Mai. We're not going to Chiang Mai yet. I'm gonna be leaving Sukhothai right now. It's boiling hot, as you can see, I'm sweating. Um, we're going to Lampang. And in the next video, you'll see a beautiful city in Northern Thailand. I'll take you to one of the most incredible, incredible temples in the whole world. And we'll be staying somewhere absolutely fantastic in the mountains. So. Enjoy a few days off without Paddy and I'll be back in a few days with the new video from Lampang where we take Zelda on our next adventure and we'll keep working out these tweaks together.